In this video, I'll show you how you can get started with CSS animations for your dashboard cards. I'm going to use the custom button card for this, but there are a few other custom cards that this will work with as well. As always, you can grab the code on the Gumroad link in the description. I'm starting this from a very basic custom button card. I have a bunch of videos about making various button card cards on the channel already. In this video, I want to concentrate on the animations. I'm going to start by adding some extra styles. This will allow us to inject CSS into the card. I guess it is similar to card mod in a way. CSS animations is a two-part process. First, we define the keyframes, then we assign those keyframes to an object or element. So let's create the keyframes first. These could be the start and end positions, for example, then it will transition between those two states. For this first example, I will create some keyframes that I call scale. Then we define each of the keyframes. At 0%, which is the start of the animation, I use the CSS transform property to scale it to 1, meaning it will just be the same as it is currently. Then I copy this line and change it to 15% of the animation. At that point I want it to scale up to 1.1, meaning it will be 10% larger. I'll copy it again, this time I will set a keyframe at 30%, but at this point I want it to scale down to 0.9, then I'll add one more keyframe at 50%, this will just scale it to 1 again, so that the animation starts and stops at the same scale. I'm going to end this animation at 50%, because I would like it to pause for a bit between each animation loop. So when we assign these keyframes to an element, this element should first scale up, then scale down, then scale back to the default scale. So let's test it out. I'm going to add these keyframes to the whole card, but you could add it to just the icon or text if you prefer. We just need to add an animation property to one of the card styling elements. In this example, we add the keyframes called scale. It will last two seconds. We will ease the keyframes, meaning the keyframes will accelerate up and down. We'll have a zero second delay at the start. It will play infinite amount of times. The direction will be normal and the fill mode will be forward. We don't have to define all these settings, but it's nice to do. And you can see now that the whole card bounces. Okay, let's create another example. This time I want to make the card glow red, indicating an error or that something might be wrong. I'm first just renaming the keyframes to shadow to keep things neat. This will just have two keyframes at the start and at 50%. At 0%, I'll add a box shadow that is invisible. I'll just set all the box shadow properties to zero, including the color and transparency. Then at 50% I'll make the shadow red and set it to full transparency. And I'll change the third number to 20 pixels, this is the blur amount. And since this animation is already added to the card, it should start glowing straight away. Now I want to change the direction from normal to alternate. This will make the animation first play forward then backwards and so on. Sort of like playing ping pong. I also changed the duration to 1 second to make it faster. One neat thing we can do with shadows is to stack them. We could just add a comma after the first shadow and add another shadow, but this time make it inset. This will make the whole card glow, not just the outside. Then you can of course play around with the inside color and other properties as well. And it's a little quick, so I'll change the duration to 1.2 seconds. For the third example, I want to add animation to only the icon. So let's move the animation property from the card to the icon. You can see that the icon starts glowing, but let's edit the animation so that it looks like the robot vacuum is cleaning. I'll empty out the keyframes, then I'll define a keyframe at 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. For this, I want to move and rotate the icon. So I'll first set a keyframe at 0 and 100, with no rotation and no position, which is called Translate in CSS. I'll just rename the keyframes to shake as well. Then for the second keyframe, I'll just copy the first one, but rotate it minus 5 degrees and move it to the left and down by setting translate to minus 3 pixels, comma 3 pixels. Then let's copy this again, set it to minus 12 degrees and move it up by setting the second translate number to minus 3 pixels. For the fourth keyframe, I'll remove the rotation and set both translate numbers to 3 pixels, moving it down to the right. For the fifth keyframe, I'll rotate it to 12 degrees and change the second translate number to minus 3 pixels, moving it up to the right. I'll just move these keyframes to the bottom so it's easier for you to see. I'll change the duration to 2 seconds and the direction to normal. When editing, I sometimes speed up and down the screen recording to make it fit the voiceover. But if I set the speed to normal, you can see how the animations look. This is cool and all, but it doesn't really make sense to have the animations play all the time. 
These animations are of course just examples. But maybe the icon should only move when the vacuum is cleaning? And the card could glow only when there's a problem with the vacuum, like if it needs emptying or water in the tank. I want the first animation that scales only to happen when there's a problem with the water tank. So because this is a separate sensor to my vacuum entity, I need to use a template state operator instead of the regular value operator. This is a little more advanced, but it is basically just checking if my water shortage sensor is on. If it is, it will style the card according to my rules. When we have this in place, we just need to move the animation property from the overall styling up into the state-based styling, making sure it's still underneath the card styling. We can check if the animation still works by changing the value to off. The second example is going to be exactly the same for me. But keep in mind this is just examples, you might want to check for a different sensor or value. The third example is a little different because I want this animation to only happen when the vacuum is cleaning. This information is coming from the actual vacuum entity so the state check is a lot simpler. I just check if the value is cleaning, and if it is, I'll add the animation to the icon. Keep in mind that the vacuum entity need to be added to the card as an entity first. And that's it for this video. Three pretty basic animations, but hopefully it gives you some ideas to continue with. Maybe you could make the icon bounce when there's bin day. Or make the card glow green when the electricity is cheap. The possibilities are pretty much endless with this. I want to show this website where you can find a lot more animation examples, but you will of course need to adapt it to Home Assistant. But it gives you the code, and you can pretty much just copy and paste it into button card. I'll add the link to this website in the video description. Thanks for watching, until next time.